want to put him up on the stage? Yeah, I got it, Jack. There's two more back in the truck. There you go. I got it. A couple of more chairs over there. I'll get them. Where you want to set up over here? Tie it down, okay? I got it. Okay, Tony. I'd like some assorted shots of these people setting out. You know, give me some atmosphere stuff. There you go. There you go. All right. Do they bite? The truckers? I better go check in now. Why don't you get off her case? Alex, how did we get stuck with her in this bottom of the barrel assignment? Here, hold this. Give her a break. It's only her first month in the field. Hey, I'm fed up playing babysitter to these boat people coming over here and laying up as anchor people just because they're oriental. Why don't you get your eyes done? I think so. So what do you say, Tag? Should we pack your suitcase now? I bought you a 12-foot tree. It's all decorated and waiting. You've always loved Christmas. It's your favorite time of year. And I've got lots of surprises for you under the tree. At home. Tag, how do you feel about going home for the holidays? Do you want your father to take that as a no? Don't give up on him. He's worse, isn't he? The holidays are a very difficult time. Maybe if you came back after New Year's, we'll see then. What shall I do with his gifts? I'll let you know. Merry Christmas. is magnificent. <laughs> you are to be congratulated, my dear fellow. <laughs> so where's the pouch? Pouch? For the 30 pieces of gold. For the golden apple. Nobody told me nothing about a pouch. Nothing on here about a pouch? What is that document you're reading from? Invoice from the place where they rented the robes. It, it's not my fault, Ken. Doctor! Doctor! He says I have no pouch. I cannot go on without a pouch. I will not go on without a pouch. We'll see that you get a pouch. Now, Ken, these people are from TV. Uh -huh. They're doing a story about the pageant. They've asked that they might talk to you. For me? Now, how would you feel about that? Oh. <laughs> fire away. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> My, you're a pretty little thing. You must be from our lock. I'm from Channel 3. Originally? Well, uh, first I was at a small station, but... Oh, originally I'm from Vietnam. That's what Vietnam was called in the first millennium, our lock. It wasn't until the 10th century after Christ that it became an independent state. Die Viet was called back in those days. Thank you, that's very informative. For those of us not familiar with the names of the three wise men, which one are you in the pageant? <laughs> well, first off, miss, if you want to get your facts straight, the, uh, the Magi were not only wise, they were also thought of as kings. <laughs> Which king are you playing? Playing? Yes. Oh, well, if you want to put it that way, I'm playing King Melchior, King of Arabia. <laughs> How did you get the part? Say again, please. I mean, how, of all the patients here at State Hospital, were you chosen to play King Melchior? That's a long story. In my case, a little more than 2,000 years. I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand. I was born 60 ANC. ANC? Well, we'll discuss this later, Ken. I think that's enough for right now. Ante, the Tivitatum, Christi. Latin for before the birth of Christ. But, of course, no one believes.
no, 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 come on, come on, now, now, this is, this is, now, listen, I'm warning you about this. Come on up here. <sighs> well, where's the doll you made, Marion? What doll? I must have misunderstood. I thought you were working on a Christmas doll for her. It's not finished. If only he would talk to me about it. He would if he could. When you're the sole survivor of an accident that terrible, you blame yourself. Does he still cry out at night? When he's alone, yes. But he's making real progress. That's why this pageant can be so productive for him. That he'll even let himself pretend to be someone else is a giant step forward. Last row. Yeah. Yeah, I can carry. No, two more seats. Two more seats. Uh, excuse me, uh, sir. Keep doing that. Excuse me, we only ordered one camel. Mary, would you, Mary, would you bring that basket? Well, ma'am, our invoice says three. These three. But Mr. Zuckerman agreed to loan us one camel. We don't need this much reality. Well, I guess Mr. Zuckerman's feeling especially generous this time of year. Well, like he told us, they got three kings out there at that hospital for their Christmas pageant, so why don't we give each king his own mount? Yeah, but, sir, these men are patient. And, uh, camels can be nasty. Yeah, they're nasty, all right. And, uh, mess, my yeah. sir. In this instance, three times as messy. Oh. Okay, well, um, let me round up my three kings and I'll see if they can handle this. Take care of it. Look good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that looks really good. Thank you. Getting really good at this. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Nice and easy, Mr. Gill. Your father's gone. He'll send you your presents if you want them, do you? He's got this incredible talent for pushing on buttons. Why do you think that is? Not that I wouldn't want to get out of here. Not today. Especially not today. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Uh, did you get the schedule changes because of the pageant? Or the uh, Mr. Forrester, you have a little work for you. Why especially not today? He's coming tomorrow. Who? Who's coming? Christ. Christ? Christ is coming? Yeah. How do you know that? I've seen signs. Why haven't you told me about these signs? Because you think I'm a schizoid psycho? Tag, you know I hate those knee-jerk labels. Well, I've seen it in your eyes. It's the same look I see in my old man's. Why can't you people believe in anything you can't see or test? Why don't you tell me about these signs? Maybe I've seen them too and I've just failed to recognize them. My ostrich. What about your ostrich? Well, today she hatched two eggs. One was a lion, and the other was a lamb. And then what happened? And then they lay down together in peace. That's a very powerful symbol, a lion and a lamb. Peace and brotherly love. Why are you so sure that that's a specific signal for the second coming? <laughs> OK. All right. You'll see. This gonna be on TV, huh? Hi, Mom. Here come the three things.
Maybe it's my habit, these Baba Wato. I see it. I don't believe it. These suckers hate their mamas. Hey, I bet, Dito. Baba Shabtu. Steady there, girl. Steady, steady. No. Find your chef here at Medgar. What'd he say? What's he talking about? You'll be fine, Tech. I'm King Balthazar. my ostrich. I can't leave him behind. Ostrich? I don't see no ostrich. Get him out behind you. We're going for a ride. Excuse me. Let's see Plaza. Back by the agent. Here we go. Hi, I'm Jan DeLong, Channel 3. You must be Dr. Bolet. Yes. Thank you for letting us come. Is the uh, staff cooperating? Everyone's being very helpful. Thank That's you. Good. When you have a minute, we'd like to ask you some questions. Sure. Um, just a little later. Okay? Thanks. How's it going? You feel okay up there? I'd be a good idea if we rode around by ourselves for a while. Yeah, I don't know if that's such a good idea, Ken. Afraid we'll fall off? Well, you have to admit that's a possibility. I thought you believed in me. In you, yes. In camels, no. If you believed in me, you'd know I was raised around camels. I won't let anything happen to King Balthazar or King Gaspar. Trust me, Doc. Okay, okay, but only for a couple of minutes. And stay right nearby, okay? Erno Maquat Mer. Dr. Bollet, pick up the comm line. Oh. Will you excuse me while I get the phone, please? Dr. Bollet? Oh, yeah. Uh, can I just wait a minute? Okay. Listen, would you ask her to come on down here to the stage? I'll talk to her here. Okay, thanks. Bye. Dr. Bollet? I've really only got a minute. What was that about an ostrich? Tag's ostrich? Um, I guess you'd call it kind of a security blanket. Why did you pick Tag Gaynor for the pageant? The medical director tells me he's only 20. I thought the three wise men were old. Oh, you're probably thinking of the drawings that you've always seen in the three magi. They're not, they're not accurate. Tag Gaynor is 20 years old, and he's playing King Gaspar of Farsus, who really was 20 years old. Paul is playing King Balthazar of Sheba, who is 40 years old, which is exactly what Paul's age is. You pick these three because their ages match the legend? <laughs> partly. But, uh, only partly. Well, what about the older man, Ken? He really seems to believe he's the king of Arabia. Is that why he's in here? The way you and I perceive the world, Miss Toulon, isn't the only way it can be perceived. You know, it's not even necessarily the best way. Four years ago, Ken's son and his son's young wife were killed in a traffic accident on their way to visit him. Soon after that, he began insisting that he was the king of Arabia. He began bothering people on the streets and making them kneel before the manger. We just think this is a better place for him until he's ready to function again in the real world. Follow me, good king. I walked in here the other day. The car was sitting down there, and he said, you won't believe what just happened to me. I, I was driving along there, and he says, I mashed on my brakes, and it went right to the floor. Didn't have a sign of a brake. He said, I almost fell over. He said, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, you probably lost all your fluid. He says, darn right, wouldn't you? <laughs> Just went out the gate. Went out the gate? Captain Stacy.
stay right here, okay? Come on. Now we have a start. Hot dog. If we leave the road and cross the wilderness here, they won't be able to follow us. Machines can't go where camels go. And then they can't stop us from finding the child. Oh, King Gasper. Nothing can stop us now. We need a sign. We need the great star. You can't see a star in broad daylight. Hey! 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 <laughs> Look! Look! It's got Daryl in the sky! That's a jet stream, man! It ain't no Christ child coming! You're free now, Paul. Free. Out here in the middle of nowhere. You go your own way, or you can come with us. But if you come with us, you must believe as we do. How can I do that, man? By having faith. By putting the past out of your mind. You think I can forget just because we're outside those gates? Paul, it was not your fault. I was the only one to get out. I let him die. The chopper burned. How could you have saved them? Yeah, well, I was a medic. And I turned my back on the dying. You decide. <laughs> I was never in favor of doing a Christmas pageant with these patients in the first place. Oh, come on, Jim. With their particular problems, this pageant could do them a lot of good. We'll call it cosmic therapy. Okay, so how are you going to do a Christmas pageant without your three kings? You just worry about running the hospital, okay? I'll find them before the pageant and before the police have a chance to frighten them. I still don't understand how letting patients play out their fantasies on stage is going to help them manage their anxieties any better. May I tell you what you are really concerned about? Whether I like it or not, you're gonna tell me, right? You're worried about the flack when news of their escape reaches the public. I shudder to think about it. The six o'clock news, mental patients at large, and with a camera crew right here at Ground Zero. I'm more worried about my patients than I am about public opinion. Well, I'm more concerned about you. Lately, you've been showing signs of being fraught. I'm just tired, that's all. Hospital burnout, I say. You stay too long at the fair. What you need is to walk on a beach for a couple of weeks, a deserted beach. <laughs> the lovely fantasy. <laughs> There's nothing out there but a lot of sagebrush and sand. Mr. Long, may I speak with you, please? What do you want us to do? Get me some shots of all that sand and sagebrush. Oh, sure. What do you consider to be the greatest single threat to human survival? Nuclear missiles? <sighs> human indifference. We read about death and violence on our front pages every day. We see it at night on TV, in the movies, over and over until we become numb. Indifferent. Do you... Do you see what I'm getting at? Not actually. But I do know something about human indifference. Then you'll understand my request. Don't report this escape. At least not yet. Can you wait a few hours until I find my patients? And let some other news team get the story? Is that all this is to you, is another story? Three mental patients escaping on camels at Christmas, the three wise men? How oh, often do you I'm get a story like that? a few like hours, that? that's all. This job is important to me. You don't know how important. All right, then um, let me make it perfectly clear what we're dealing with here. All three of these patients are unpredictable. Tag, the youngest, is the most critical. Without regular medication, he's like a walking time bomb. Why? Why? <laughs> How 
how can I make you understand? If I say he's looking for love, who isn't? If I say he's depressed, who isn't? If I say he has low self-esteem, who doesn't? But in his case, he becomes agitated, sometimes suicidal. Can you see what could happen if this turns into a media event? See the great star anywhere? No. But we should look to the west. Which which way is west? That way. Toward Jerusalem. That's L.A. You can see the light. It's not Jerusalem. It's L.A. No. Christ Christ wasn't born in L.A. Born in Bethlehem. See, so we have to go to Jerusalem to get to Bethlehem. What are you nuts? Didn't you go to Sunday school? What, you think I'm wigged out? You ought to hear yourself. King Balthasar, I told you, you must start believing. God has ordained the three of us to find the Christ child. We must give him gifts, pay him homage. Yeah? What does it say, all that? In our hearts. You two are really something else. What if we don't find him? If we fail, then all mankind fails. There'll be no love left in the world, no mercy. Christ's birth is the birth of hope. If he's not born tomorrow, if we don't find him, then all hope is lost, don't you see? There'll never be a Christmas. Never a time for peace and goodwill towards men. Unless we make it happen. Hey. Hey, look. Hey. Hey, guys. Look. It's the star. The great star. Come. Come, good kings. Wait, wait, that's not a star, that's a searchlight. They use that as supermarket opens and gas stations. Mount up. Come. Let us hasten. All right. All right. But I'm telling you, that's just a searchlight. By the time we get over there, it'll be daylight. Hiya, Sophia. I have did for via. I have the Whoa! Whoa! What was that? A medic. A medic? I said to her, rise, my beautiful ship of the desert. A medic was my first language. When I was a Bedouin tribesman. <laughs> hiya, Kia. Ho, oh, hiya. Hiya, Kia. figure to spot those crazies in the middle of nowhere anyway. Well, we gotta try and find them, all right? People, by now, we should be in Monrovia covering the nude Miss Santa Claus beauty pageant. Then we have the car giveaway at the Fullerton Shopping Mall. And don't forget the Christmas Carol contest in Irvine by tomorrow. You know, you could get us fired. I have to use my judgment. Think they'll stay out here all night or head on into L.A.? Ken will follow Matthew. I didn't call that name in. What's Matthew's last name? <laughs> Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 13, the Holy Bible. 
Matthew wrote that the three wise men, guided by the great star, journeyed out of the east to Jerusalem to ask King Herod where they might find the Christ child. Ken's going to look for a town he thinks is Jerusalem and a man he believes to be King Herod. Let's keep driving west. Right. to tell you guys, but you just don't listen. They even use those things to open up hot dog stands. What it is and what it isn't is beside the point. Yeah? What is the point? It brought us here, didn't it? So King Herod must be close by. There. Inside his palace. Hiya. See, Blasi, you don't get the breeze. that just came in for Christmas. It's lovely. Your king must be very rich. His palace is laden with gifts. King? Palace? Where is his throne room? You're putting me on. We've come to find King Herod. Will you direct us? Harold the king. Herod the king. I pronounce it Harold. You, 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 you boys are in the wrong town. He's over in Van Nuys. In Jerusalem? Well, he might have a branch there, but his main operation is in Van Nuys. And I ought to know. I drive by there every day on my way to work. It's right on Ventura Boulevard. You and your, uh, caravan can't miss it. What do you think, King Gasper? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know we'll find Herod there. You two guys are really confused. It's time for tax medication, and I am really getting sick and tired of this. And I'm not moving. I'm not going any place. See you higher. See you higher. See you higher. See you higher. Frankincense. 
sense in Gifts for the Christ child. A credit card, your highness. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall all be glad and rejoice in it. We go now to honor the Son of God. Hiya, see ya, hiya. Maxine, call security. Couldn't they do something with rabbits for the holidays? as kings on camels going into the gallery of parking lot. Yeah, anything to sell more toys and soap on a rope. Hey, fellas, the radius for Fisher calls only, okay? Sounds like our guys. Oh, thank goodness. what may sound like a strange question. Is that okay? What's the problem, officer? Just listen to the lady, sir. Have you seen three men on camels? Three men dressed like kings? Yeah, three guys on camels dressed like kings. You have? How long ago? An hour. Maybe less. In what way do they go? Just follow the camel chips. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Up that way. They rode up into the mall. Thank you. Oh, at least we know they managed to get out of the desert. Will you call Tag's father and Paul's wife let him know? Okay, you go on ahead. I'll call them. Thanks. Hey, Fred, Sam, wait up, man. Tony, do you mind getting... Yes, Mr. Long. What can I do for you? I just want to get my sweater. I'd hate to wake up next to you in the morning. I get nasty when I don't get my beauty sleep. I guess he never sleeps. I'll see you inside, guys. Tony, you are so charming. Hey, guys, how you doing? Yeah, I know it sounds bizarre, officer, but yeah, three shoplifters on camel. <laughs> New wrinkle, huh? Just rode in, out of nowhere, and helped themselves to the purchase. The old guy took two bottles. One of them was our three-ounce size, the big one. Now, I know they're on special, but still, they cost $200 each. So we're talking about uh, $300. Uh-huh, that's right, officer. They were on camels. Well, actually, they were dromedaries. Dromedaries? Yeah, you know, one lump. You're learning something every day. Did they say where they were going? What? They just asked about this King Harold. Who are you? Dr. Belay, Los Lagos State Hospital. Can you get notification for three missing patients? Didn't come through yet, at least not to us. What did you tell them about uh, King Harold? Uh, the name is Harold, not Harold. Well, they asked where they could find him. What did you tell him? Well, the only King Harold I know is the car salesman. You know, the King of Deal. We'll call it in and scoop him up the minute they get there. No, please. It's critical that I'm there when they're taken into custody. Well, okay. How did they react when you told them about this, uh, Harold? Well, one of them said, uh, good, we've found him. And the other one said, man, you're confused. And then the old guy turned around and said some crazy language to the, to the uh, camels, and they turned around and charged right out. And then he reached down and helped himself. $300 worth. Did they say anything when they took the perfume? Just some people's names. Frank Incense and Myrtle somebody or another. Frank Incense and Myrrh? Myrrh, that's right, Myrrh. And then he said something about we must all rejoice, and then something about the Son of God, and then he charged right after the other two. <laughs> Talk about weird. Look, I can't ask you to keep this quiet any longer, but please, don't make a circus out of it. Is that what you think we're doing? Let's go. Are these three mental patients dangerous? Probably not. But the chances are they may be more of a threat to themselves than to the public. If it's true that they escape to look for the savior, some of us are beginning to wonder why should we stop them? Maybe we should join them instead. This is Jan Dulong on the Trail of the Three Kings, live from San Fernando Valley on this morning of Christmas Eve. Yes, sir. This isn't the Harrod you've been looking for. I've seen this dude in commercials on TV. Something wrong here. It's time for your...
your medication. I brought these pills from the hospital. He desperately no longer needs medication. Look at him! Any minute now, he's gonna come unglued. You are mistaken spiritual zeal for mental illness. He is free now. Give him his chance. Let his belief carry him through. Listen, man. Take these pills. They'll make you feel a lot better. Come on, you can trust me. You know I was a medic. You need medication to give you faith? Or will you be, really be, King Gasper and help me find the Christ child? Pick those pills up, man. They're the only ones I brought. You're gonna come apart without them. Kings do not come apart. We all know who the coward is. Kings do not bear witness against each other. Then why does he refuse to become part of our dream? Perhaps he is still a prisoner of his own dream. But today we will free him too. Thank you, King Valenstein, for helping King Gasper. But as you can see, he no longer needs that kind of help. Come now. We find King Herod. Guess I'm in the back here. Got any suggestions? Can't you shoot this commercial just with the sheep? Al, I can shoot it against a blank wall, but you promised me camels. I can't get you any camel. I can't get camels. I should have told you earlier. I thought I'd wait until the sheep got here. Look, the agency called up all over town. Camels don't grow on trees, okay? Sheep, they're sending. For a wise man? Actually, no. It's a great touch. Let me have the thought. Ah, hey, you hold this card up. You hold this card up. Right, and you, uh, how about you doing the point? Point at what? Pointing at the sign. Or, or Alan, Alan, maybe. Come here. Maybe it would be better if he got off of that thing and he led it toward the manger like he saw the great star. I don't know, Dan. It's kind of sacrilegious, isn't it? 40% off is definitely not sacrilegious. And 1% financing is as Christian as I can get. Are you King Herod? You're talking to him, baby. The one, the only, the original. King of deals. Did you see any sheep on the way? We're not looking for sheep. We're looking for the shepherd. We seek the Christ child. All right, hold that sign up a little higher. Yeah. All right. We're ready? Yeah, we're ready when you're ready, Hal. All right. Now bring it closer. Closer! I want the people to see the Christmas love in my eyes. Smile! Okay, Hal. We're five and four. Three, two. Five! Christmas is the time for giving. Down here at Harold's, King of Deals, we are giving away everything on the lot. So come on down and pick out your gift. I don't we trust this left. king. I want really, the man is demented. Come, we'll find our own Bethlehem. Wait, wait, cut, 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 cut. Hey, hey, come on, guys, that was a good take, too. Hey, listen, you guys! You're finished! You'll never work in this town again! Where did they find these guys?
check this out. Greetings, good centurions. We are near the time for rejoicing. Mute. Hi. Joy to the world. I'm Judy. What's your name? King Gaspar. Cool. I've never known anybody named King. I knew a duke once, but he was a jerk. So, uh, give me a hand. Why? Because I want to get up on your camel. Uh, uh, there, there's really, really not room up there for all three of us. Three of us? Are you kidding? I'm not asking Steve long. It's just you and me, Sheik. My ostrich is up there. Your ostrich? Oh, wow. I have a feather for my hair. All right, that's enough, all right? Get back in the car. Hey, forget it. What's riding a car when she could ride on a camel with an ostrich? King, are you going to give me a little boost? Huh? I'm going to take you apart. <laughs> Mount your chariot and follow us to the manger. Like you stay out of this, all right, fruitcake? Fruitcake? Man, you just said the operative word. See, we're mental patients. We escaped yesterday. We're dangerous. Listen to me. For I'm King Melchior, King of Arabia. We come to find the Christ child. We want you to join us and to rejoice. Yeah. So what's that make you, bird brain? King Gaspar of Pharsis. King, are you carrying me off in a camel or what, huh? Look butt out, baby. This is between me and him. screaming at my old man. You know, in my whole life, not even once, not even when my mother died, has my father ever put his arms around me? Or is that too much to expect? my father loved me. Being the father of the king is not easy. Brings me gifts. But he doesn't love me. Why is that? Before this day is over, you'll get all the love you ever need.
sun. Give us a sign. How can you see a star in broad daylight? Man, we're getting nowhere. We're just riding around in circles. There. Oh, King Melchior. The great star. We must follow it. See ya. Hiya. Hiya. Guys, guys, that's the Goodyear blimp. Hey. Hey. Let's do it again. So, capture the Christmas spirit and come on down to Harold's King of Deals. Ha! Got it! What is that noise? Uh, this is Unit 195. We're at Harold's King of Deals. Any new sightings on those 3918s, advise ASAP. Okay, okay, okay. Can you get this camera out of my way, please? I got a news deadline, Channel 3. Wait, 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 why are you shooting us? You'll be talking to the doctor and just pretend we're not here, okay? All set? Yeah. What, 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 doctor? Are you Harold the King? Are all you people with Channel 3? Just listen to the lady, sir. Of course I'm Harold! Harold, King of Deals! You've seen three men on camels. Oh, you're with the agency, then. You got my call about them just riding off? Right in the middle of the take. Very, very unprofessional. How long ago? Well, they just got in and they took off. Don't you expect me to pay you? How long ago did they take off? I'm going to be very honest with this woman. I am going to pay her whatever it costs to rent those camels or whatever it costs to get those guys in those clothes. Which way did they go? That way. desert then we found it we'll find it again we're close daylight do we have left? An hour. Can I cover the city in an hour? I wouldn't bank on this too much. Why not? Because the one time a black and white spot of them, they just rode away before supporting units got there. God, I'm so frightened. 
So talk about it. Isn't that what you tell your patients? I'm frightened for Paul and Tag. And not Ken? Ken. Sometimes I feel as though he's the therapist and I'm the patient. He sings songs sometimes that I've never heard before. I asked him once, you know, I said, what is that that you're singing? You know what he said? He said, it doesn't matter what you're singing. What matters is why you sing. I never should have let them get on those camels. They were supposed to just walk them around on foot to the manger. This whole fiasco is all my fault. Well, I'm just going to have to find him before it gets dark again. and move. Well, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in here and grab a man's shoe like that. At least you can do is wait until I'm dead. Give me my shoe. How can I help you if you won't lie yeah, still? You what are you trying to do? Rip my shirt right off of my back and while I'm wide awake? Man, I don't believe this. I'll put the flames out. Wait a minute. I'll put the flames out. I'll put the flames out. Get you crazy, man. Are you the bountiful? I'm King Velcro. What kind of horses are those? Ah! Man, you better wait for me. What are you trying to do? Get away from me. I'll be crazy, man. Get away from me. I gotta get away from this man. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, you better get out of here. That's a crazy man right there. Uh, you better come on. Come on. Get out of here! Come on! Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Listen. 
listen to other voices than the ones you hear. Open up your heart, Paul. Listen with us. Listen to God's voice. To God. What did he do for those people in the chopper? What did God ever do for me? He took them in the palm of his hand to a better place. He left you here to do his work. I could have saved them. I could have saved some of them. Even one of them. But uh, the fire was so hot. Mm. And I knew the chopper would explode. What else could I do but run? I want to be King Baltazar. I don't want to be myself anymore. Can you... Can you please help me? Of course. Please? Of course, Paul, of course. That's why we're here. city, opening their hearts, feeling the Christmas spirit, are just so many marks, so many targets of opportunity. Houses packed with brand new consumer goods, all gift wrapped. Doors and windows wide open to welcome Christmas visitors. Goodwill to men. <laughs> it's the welcome mat for every punk in the street, and we have to deal with that. It's fascinating, and really depressing. Look, I just have to find my patience. Come on, I'll get you some coffee. No sleep. One lousy tuna melt sandwich since yesterday. What did I do to deserve this, Alex? Could be your karma, man. <laughs> so, how's it feel, Jan, to score the big story of the season? You're part of the team. How do you feel? Look at the media crowd. Look. Every news team in town. And you had the story first, didn't you? Figures. Look, the doc will be in there a while. Nobody else will be able to get the story. So we got time for cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger! Fries, cheeseburger! Huh? Okay, I'll flip you to see who buys. Call it hot shot. It's... <laughs> okay, so who wants what? Dan? Oh, nothing, thank you. What? No fish heads? No steamed rice? Something to tide you over? Hey, Tony, lighten up. In a couple of hours, it'll be Christmas. Do I look like I'm home opening Christmas presents, Alex? Did you ever hear of Christmas? Where you come from? Oh, boy. I'll get you some hot tea. Is it because I'm Vietnamese? Now, what do I know? Vietnamese. I was only a teenager when that whole scene came down. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I, I can't seem to get you to like me. 
Why is that? Do I have to have a reason? I'm not asking you for flowers. Well, don't sweat it, okay? Because no matter what, in three months, you're going to be an anchor person, and I'll be shooting dog shows in Van Nuys. Have you any idea where I learned English? Oxford. In a refugee camp, okay? Five years locked in, but always knowing that one day I'd be one of the lucky ones to get to America. It's blind faith. The same thing that's driving the Three Kings. That's why I'm attracted to this story. What can I say? to the Christ child. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Total geeks, OK? Listen to me. Believe in what I say. No need to call it in. Or even read us our rights. Yeah, why not? We are considered mentally incompetent. By extremely competent authority. You've got a real point there. Uh, okay. Tie those camels to that tree there. Oh. You're from Ireland, no? From Ireland, yes. Uh, I, I liked it better when they called it Aaron. Do you have children? Yeah, two. <laughs> I thought so. 
I saw your Santa Claus suit in the chariot. I play Santa every year. So? Why aren't you with your children now? Giving them their gifts and your unbounded love. Look, don't you try and talk your way out of this bust. Is there much paperwork involved in bringing us into custody? That's my problem. Also your children's problem. Remember, once you take us in, you'll be tied up a long time. <laughs> I promise you. Are you threatening me? Oh, on the contrary. I'm asking you to rejoice with us. Go home, collect your family, then come back and join us to the manger where we lay our gifts at the feet of the baby Jesus. God has given you this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Do not fail it. Do not fail your children. Do you think because I'm Irish, I'm going to fall for this line of Blarney? Not Blarney, dear Centurion. Not Blarney. It's God's wish. Are you guys really crazy? Or are you just putting people on? In all Jerusalem tonight, we are the sanest of people. Near. You've got a real point there. Well, what do you know? I was off duty ten minutes ago. Merry Christmas. The Lord will bless you. But the three kings rode steadily west and presently climbed the hill to Bethlehem. There they paused at a well. And on the surface of the water, the road images shone. Behind them was reflected the evening sky. And in it, clear and bright, the star swam. place we seek. Behold the great star. Come, good kings. We go now to do that which we were born to do. There's no King Balthazar. Do you know who we are? Yes. Do you know why we're here? Because you're the three wise men. Two. Two. This is an attraction, but I didn't. Can you give this to him, please? This will mean more to him than all the gold we bring. Will we see you again? Yes. You look for us next year. After all, I've been doing this for almost 2,000 years. I'm not going to stop now. Bye. Goodbye.
Nope. Orders are we only call it in. Then we keep an eye on him till that doctor scoops him up. How do you spell camel anyway? One M or two? <laughs> are you putting me on? Yeah. But I gotta tell you, Harry, ten years on the force, first time I ever had to spell the word. confirmed. Thank you. I'm just, I'm so worried of what Paul's reaction is going to be when he sees the helicopter. What is this place that they're headed for? Our latest tent city for the homeless. <sighs> well, of course they'd go there. Where else would Christ be born again? us to your son. Two! Two! Where's Madeline? Who's Madeline? 
King Balthazar, I'm constantly amazed at your faulty memory. Madeline is a little girl who comes to worship the Christ child, but she has no gift to give. So a star will fall at her feet, and an angel will appear. Madeline. I never read about any Madeline in my Bible. It's an old European legend. The legend of the Christmas rose. Tell him, King Gaspar. The angel will stand beside Madeline and strike the ground with his staff. Flowers will spring up. Flowers with golden hearts and snow-white petals. Madeline will pluck the petals and enter the manger, bringing her gift to Jesus, the Christmas rose. Slap the cuffs on you. Listen to me. I'll have medics here in three or four minutes. Officer, I am a medic. Can't you try CPR? Anything? I've tried everything. The baby's airway is blocked. There's nothing else I can do. King Balthazar, I command you. Get that child back to Mary. I need fire, a candle, a flame, something. Give me some fire. He's a mental patient. Damn it, let me through. Hold that like that. <laughs> Officer, have one of your men get me a small tube or something to keep the baby's airway open. Until the ambulance gets here. Sir, it fell from a dude's pocket when I happened to bump into him. Solid gold. going on, Doc? I'm not back there anymore. I'm here. All 
I know, Paul, is that you saved this baby's life. A token of divinity and myrrh. We can all rejoice. The king is born. Midnight clear as Christmas Day breaks. Who is to say whether or not the three patients who found their way by camel from a mental hospital to this community of the homeless and saved the life of a dying baby, believing him to be the infant Jesus, may not have been guided by divine intervention? At least on this Christmas morning, it would be comforting to think so. This is Jan Dulong for Channel 3 from Cardboard City in downtown L.A. A little corny, maybe, but overall, not bad. Thank you, Tony. You know, you almost had me believe in you for a minute. <laughs> what did you just tell them on TV? The three of you have done a beautiful thing, King Gasper, for all of us. No. No, I heard you. I heard you. You said that we didn't find Jesus. That he wasn't born again. That we just thought so. That we're crazy. Now you take it back right now. Wait a minute, it's all right. Everything is gonna be all right. Oh, did you hear Tag, her? listen to me. Did you hear take her? It easy. Calm you, down. you're gonna shoot it again. And this time, this time she's gonna tell them that we found Christ. And that I found my real father. Just lighten up, pal. Please, please, please. Please tell her she's wrong. Please tell her it was Jesus. Please. Tag. Every newborn child is the child of God. trouble here. Thought you might like some coffee. I hope black is all right. That's fine. That's Thank fine. you. I saw you on TV last night. Best show I've seen all year. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, I still feel good about the way I felt last night. I just wish I felt that way every day of the year. Well, you can. All it takes is belief. You sure were convincing. You had me believing you were King... What's that? King Melchior. Yeah. I am, of course. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Have either of you ever been to Germany? Cologne? 
That's too bad. There's a magnificent cathedral in Cologne. I'm buried there. Thanks for the coffee. Uh, Mr. Zuckerman expects his camels back for noon. At least I think I'm buried there. You see, after we found the Christ child in Bethlehem, each of us returned to our own country. I lived to a ripe old age. <laughs> then eventually they, they brought my body to Constantinople, then Milan, and two years later to Cologne, where to this day it lies behind an altar of gold in the cathedral. My spirit lives on in the 60-year-old body of a stranger. Do either of you have any idea whose body this is? Let's get these turkeys on the truck. Hey, yeah, good idea. Thanks for talking. She'll go now. Remember you, my wonderful ship of the desert. I will miss you. Till next year, good shepherd.